Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again, and I just thought I'd do a bit of a uh, quick roundup video of a few things that I've picked up recently. There's not a great deal, uh, but I've also got some footage which I filmed yesterday um, in a charity shop of some records which you may find interesting, uh, but I didn't buy any of, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, yeah, so as you may have uh, noticed, I've uh, recently hit triple digits. Um, so thank you, thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed, and a particular thank you for everybody who has commented. Uh, it's incredibly encouraging. Uh, I've been making these videos for about a year, well it'll be a year in January and um, I think I've found something that I really enjoy so the fact that anybody outside of my immediate friends and family would ever even uh, click on it is, uh, yeah, blows my mind so yeah, thank you. Um, Alright, so we'll get into the, uh, the things I've picked up, like I say, don't be uh, expecting anything amazing, there's a couple of bits of vinyl and some CDs so um, we shall start with the CDs I think, um, first of all, uh, the band The Last Wars Fantastic double album soundtrack. Oh, three record set on two compact discs, it says there. I got this for one pound. Um, this was an album which, oh, in my early to mid thirties, uh, when I was sharing a house with some friends, uh, we'd have this on pretty much every night. Um, this and Marky Moon, and I think the first Arcade Fire and Radiohead that year were talking sort of early to mid 2000s. This was a constantly uh, being played. And the, the video, the DVD of the film as well, we watched quite a lot. So yeah, I was really happy to pick that up for one pound. Right, and these are all 50 pence. Um, I'm definitely going to be picking up CDs from now on if I see them. Uh, I think years of uh, just how to, having um, stuff on cassette and downloading things on, on my computer means that I'm missing a lot of physical copies of things I really like. So um, seeing as a lot of CDs now are a pound or 50 pence even in charity shops, if I see something that I know, I'm just going to grab it, you know. I'm not going to wait for the, uh, the vinyl to, co to come along. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I've got uh, Audio Slave, Revelations. Uh, I've not heard this album, um, but I do like uh, the people in it. So I'm a I was a huge Soundgarden fan, one of my favourite bands of the 90s. Um, but yeah, I've not really listened to much Audio Slave, so I'll give that one a go for 50 pence. I think this has actually got a DVD in it as well. Uh, yeah, it comes with a bonus disc of a DVD uh, and there's the CD and there's the rest of it okay so uh, a band that um, I think some of you over in the States may have never heard of uh, they're called Shed 7 uh, now they were a Britpop band uh, kind of late Britpop I think um, definitely mid 90s I uh, can't quite see I think this is 96 on their the release date um, but much maligned, I think, in the press, in the music press at the time, they were sort of considered to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a joke, really, and I don't know why. Um, so I thought I'd give this a listen and give them a reappraisal. Um, it may have been the name Shed Seven <laughs> was, you know, maybe a bit daft, but I think they were maybe undeserving of uh, the kind of jokey criticism they got. I just remember from the Melody Maker and the Enemy at the time, they were like the butt of, of many jokes. Uh, they were kind of like the Britpop version of Dumpy's Rusty Nuts. <laughs> so, if you've never heard of Dumpy's Rusty Nuts, then, uh, yeah, search them out, seek them out. <laughs> okay, finally on CD, uh, a, this is an album which um, Matt Hayes showed a couple of weeks ago on vinyl, and it's cast, and he uh, played a few, uh, few seconds of it, and I thought I'd forgotten all about cast, but yeah, this has got loads of good songs in it, actually. So yeah, I was very happy to get this. Um, all right, Sandstorm, Walk Away, good stuff, good Liverpool band these. Uh, this is the booklet. Whatever I happen to cast, I'll have to just do a bit of looking around and see if they, how many albums they did. They seem to have, uh, they seem to blew up and then disappear unfortunately. Ooh. Uh, right, so that's the CDs. I've just got two uh, vinyl albums. Um, Mud Rock, again a band that people over in the States may not be familiar with. Mud were huge in the uh, very early 70s in the UK. They had a string of number ones. Most of them were a bit sort of, uh, uh, did a, I think they did an Elvis cover. Uh, they were sort of in the same mould as like Slade and The Sweet and um, same um, writing team. Um, of uh, Chapman and Chin, Chin and Chapman, 
Uh, but I got this because it's got one of my favourite songs of all time on it, and one of my favourite songs from when I was a kid, and that's the song Tiger Feet. Which has been a massive influence in my musical tastes and, and musical writing, I think, over the years, in, in one way or another. Uh, that sort of, what I call the glam vamp. I didn't realise on here it's actually part of a medley um, with the song Diner Might, the cat crept in and then Tiger Feet comes at the end. And there's a couple of other uh, medleys on here. Do You Love Me and Sha La La Li Li. And Hippie Hippie Shakes on here. Uh, Shake, Rattle and Roll, See You Later Alligator uh, medley. It's also got Blue Moon on it and In the Mood and Bye Bye Johnny by Chuck Berry. Uh, and if you've never heard of Chin and Chapman, um, they wrote a lot of songs for The Sweet and Susie Quattro and the like. And they wrote the original song that Hey, um, hey Mickey was based on, the Tony Basil song. So yeah, they were like big time glam rock songwriters. Unfortunately this is a little bit split. Uh, but yeah, this is only a pound off uh, the market in Preston. And there was another guy there who sells lots of records. He had exactly the same album um, for seven quid and somebody else had it for a pound so it's worth looking around and this is on Rack Records. Is it rack or R-A-K? I'm guessing I'm saying rack. <laughs> right, and the last bit of vinyl. Um, if you'd have asked me in 1986 uh, what my favourite song of all time was, I would have said it's The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News, <laughs> as uh, featured on in the film Back to the Future. Uh, I still love this song, um, but I've never heard the album it was from. Um, so when I saw this, equally for a pound on the market, I thought, I'm having that. Um, this has also got Jacob's Ladder on it, Stuck With You, which you may be familiar with, Whole Lot of Lovin', Doing It, All For My Baby, uh, Hip To Be Square, which is another big hit, uh, I Know What I Like, I Never Walk Alone, The Power Of Love, uh, Forest For The Trees, Naturally, and Simple As That. So yeah, bit of Huey Lewis. Uh, weren't they Patrick Bateman's favourite band? You like Huey Lewis on the news? There's a lot about them, <laughs> but yeah, I'm very happy to pick this up, even if it's just like one song. Another hip to be square is quite good. And this is on Chrysalis. <laughs> right, and finally for this section, we have one more piece of vinyl. Uh, this is something I picked up too late to be included in my uh, jazz haul video, uh, which you hopefully would have seen. Uh, this is Stan Getz 45, um, seven inch single on the Bravo label and I've not listened to it yet so in keeping with the theme of the last video I thought I'd spin it now for you. Um, on here we have side one Blue Rhythm Jam and Blue Rhythm Blues. I've gone all out on the song tiles there. And side two and the Angel Swing and Don't Worry About Me. So uh, let's give this one a play shall we? Okay there's the label on the Bravo label and this is from uh, 1965. It's that big band sound again. Reminds me of the Stan Kenton one I, was, I um, played. So I'm surprised at the 1965 date, this does sound a lot older than that to me. Now that I'm a, a jazz expert, obviously. <laughs> um, so I wonder when it was actually recorded. Let's say, it just says in the back here, Incredibly, we have captured on this one Bravo EP four of the greatest tunes by one of America's all-time jazz greats. Here it is, a record in a million. A record which will enhance your collection. And there's a... Uh, list of other 7 inch records there, available on Bravo. Squealy. Ok, this is the flip side. And the Angels Swing. 
Right, well, little Stan gets um, a 45 Jazz 7 inch, and uh, yeah, it was alright. Um, I wouldn't say it was up there with Red Novo Trio and um, some of the other ones that I was listening to the other week. So thank you very much for everybody who watched those jazz videos and uh, was very kind and uh, commented and uh, didn't rip me for, to pieces for not knowing um, what was happening or thinking that the uh, jazz band would have a valve tuba involved when it was quite clearly a jazz uh, valve trombone. Um, I don't know if anyone else noticed that. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, of this footage I filmed, yeah, so uh, unfortunately I'm in a position now where I'm not really spending a lot of money uh, on vinyl. Mo? Hang on, I've got a cat making a funny noise. Mo? He just does that when he's about to be sick. Just one minute. Yeah, he's fine. He was just on the windowsill. I think he'd seen the neighbour's cat and he was just sort of communicating with it. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm going to have to be reining in some of my spending for the next couple of weeks on um, second-hand records. So. But I couldn't resist going into my local charity shop, uh, so I was walking past there anyway. And uh, yeah, and um, I saw a few very, very, very interesting things, um, but things at a price which I wasn't prepared to pay, unfortunately. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll run the footage now and then speak over it and you'll see what I mean. Alright, so this is the first thing I saw. This is Zentrix, a local Preston band. Actually, I think they were from Leyland, if that's not too far away. Uh, yeah, I was uh, not expecting to see this in my local charity shop. This is their first album, uh, Shatter's Existence. Yeah, so Mark G with a C, I think, showed this on CD in one of his videos. Um, this Zentrix were a thrash metal band, and we had the pleasure of uh, supporting them when they played at the Tash in Blackpool. Um, a couple of years after this was released, I think this album here came out in 1989 and we supported them in 1992 uh, so I don't think things were going too well for them if they were playing at the Tash although I did look on uh, the set list FM and they played Hammersmith Odeon a couple of weeks later so I guess they were doing a warm-up gig <laughs> probably best known for their cover version of the Ghostbusters theme uh, which we've got a bit of airplay and uh, was on programs like the Power Hour I don't know if you remember that and a Headbangers Ball, I think. Uh, but yeah, probably a bit more well-renowned as a um, serious thrash band. So, if this would have been under a tenner, I probably would have sprung for it. I just, uh, yeah, maybe I should have got it. I don't know. Fifteen quid is about the right price, but uh, again, it was. I'm not. Uh, you know, I wasn't wasn't looking to spend that much. I'm sure somebody will uh, will pick it up and give it a good home. Yeah, I know. Maybe we're still there in a few weeks. I'll get it once I've been paid. I doubt it, though. All right, this was a Jethro Tull album I've never heard of. Uh, speaking of local bands, uh, Ian Anderson, originally from Blackpool. Never really heard any Jethro Tull. This, that was one of the later ones, so, um, and I didn't pick that one up either. Okay, a Beatles al album, Hard Day's Night, without the cover. <laughs> uh, for six pounds, plays well. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to pick up an album without a cover. Okay, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee in London. Uh, Rare Blues for £8. Uh, I didn't know, I'd not heard of any either of those people. Let me know if you think £8 is a good price for that. Uh, was I a fool to leave it behind? Somebody had written on it in pen, little dots there, I don't know why they'd done that. And this one, very, very rare. Call a doctor, 40 quid. Some marks on disc. Hmm. Yeah, I've never heard of Dr. Isaiah Ross. So, is, uh, is this worth the money? Is this worth 40 pounds? Okay, I just thought I'd add this on at the end. This is on the market a couple of days before. And this guy normally just has the boxes of. Uh, of stuff he gets from house clearances, I think. He normally just has like, uh, you know, quite a lot of junk. But normally the albums he has in this box are a pound. So when I pulled this out, I had to ask him, I said, you know, this, this, is this one a pound? And he wanted a fiver for it. And I didn't get it. And the album was very, very dirty. Uh, it didn't look massively scratched, but it just looked really scuffed up. And even at a fiver, but now, I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> and I also didn't have any ca uh, cash on me at the time. <laughs> I would have had to go to the cash machine. And he also had uh, with the Beatles. Equally for a fiver, this, but this one was in, in really bad shape. Um, 
I don't know, maybe I should have got them for a tenner, but... Uh... Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.